Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Max. I'm back today with another YouTube video, and today we're back with another Dark Souls Remastered tutorial-esque video. In this video, we're going to be showing you the best farming locations for any Covenant offering items. These including, you know, like the Covenants that you need to offer things to to get more stuff out of the Covenant from, which is most of them, but not all of them, unfortunately, which is kind of upsetting. Uh, so the first, we are here in the Demon Ruins, uh, and just before the Demon Fire Sage boss arena, there is a farming location of the Sunlight Maggots to get Sunlight Metals. Now before we talk about what those do, keep in mind for any of these farming strategies, you're always going to want to be at 10 Humanity, and our Humanity counter at the top left is always at 10. This boosts our item discovery by a lot. And as you'll see in just a little bit, we're going to switch out the Havel Ring for the Gold Covetous Servos... Ugh, gold Covetous Serpent Ring. Oh my gosh, I don't know why it's so hard to say that. Um... <laughs> So, which also boosts your item discovery. Now, if you wanted to go even crazier, you could get the symbol of avarice. But again, we're not absolute tryhards. We're just tryhards. So, that's good enough. It gets you to 410 item discovery between the two of those things. Now, these guys give you the sunlight medals. Now, you do get three for free in an Orlando um, in a chest, just through normal progression. But these are the guys that you need to farm on both sides of this Lost Eyes Lift door to get the uh, sunlight medals. Which that, of course, will get you to... Uh, plus one rank in the Sunlight Covenant to get the Great Lightning Spear. There's nothing else to do after that, unfortunately. Um, there are some Covenants that will benefit more if you give more offering, but yeah, for the Warriors or Sunlight, it's just a rank one for the Great Lightning Spear. Okay, now going into the Depths. This is going to be a good area for a couple of different uh, offerings. Um, the first one is going to be with the Rats and Humanity. The rats are the only enemy in the main game outside of DLC that can drop uh, humanities, at least frequently. Obviously, bosses will all drop humanity, but of course, you only get to fight a boss once. So for a farming strategy, the rats are your best bet. As I mentioned, there is uh, an enemy, the humanity sprites in the DLC, that will also drop humanity, but they're also kind of just a bitch to deal with. So in my experience, the rats are better. However, the humanity sprites in the DLC in the Chasm of the Abyss will technically drop, have a higher drop rate for humanity. Again, 10 humanity in your bar on the top left, gold gold serpent ring, and you'll be getting humanities from these guys pretty good. Now, let's talk about the reason why you're farming humanity. One, humanity is a good PvP item if they ever do decide to fix PvP. And two, uh, you do need to farm humanity for the Dark Rife Covenant. As once you get to plus one with 10 humanity, they'll give you the red eye orb so you don't have to use crack red eye orbs to invade. And at plus two, with 30 humanities offered, you'll get the dark sword and the dark armor set. And then uh, at Plus three with 80 humanity donated, you'll, your dark hand will basically steal more humanity if you decide to use it in PvP, so on and so forth. The other other covenant that this is good for is the Chaos Servant Covenant, which also requires humanity to be donated. If you donate 10 humanity, and again, I, the path you're seeing on screen here is just showing you all the... And I got kind of get owned by these fucking rats here for a little bit. But this is just showing you all the rats in the depths. You don't have to go this route as well. You can kind of just, you know, homer bone after the second group of ma uh, of rats. That's probably the, the fastest method. But there are some other rats here. But anyways, uh, to get to rank 1, you have to offer 10 humanity. Uh, technically gets you nothing. Um, but at rank 2, uh, after donating 30 humanity, you'll get Chaos Storm. And you'll also uh, open the shortcut in Lost Eyes Lift to save Solaire. Uh, so that's important if you want to do that. The second part of the depths, and there is some more rats here to include your farming if you wanted to go for both at the same time. You're going to want to start in the room where the merchant is that sells you the gold pine resin and the crystal stuff. And this will be the start where you can start farming the um, weird lizard dude guys. <laughs> oh man, I, uh, basilisks. Jesus, I almost forgot their name. But this is relevant because these guys drop... The Eyes of Death, which I'm pretty sure I get one off the first guy here. Yeah, they have a really good drop rate, so you're probably only going to have to farm do like two or three runs total. Some of these other guys have a lower drop rate, drop rate, but these guys have a pretty good drop rate for the Eyes of Death. Now this is significant as you do need to farm Eyes of Death um, for the Grave Lord Covenant if you do d decide to join that. Uh, at rank one, after offering ten Eyes of Death, you'll get the better Grave Lord Great Sword Dance. Um, instead of just the Grave Lord Sword uh, Miracle, you'll get the second Miracle for doing that. At 30, Eyes of Death donated. Uh, basically, the Miracles will do more damage. And then at 80, he, uh, Eyes of Death offered, they'll do even more damage at like 30% more damage. So yeah, uh, it's important if you want to go do all that. And again, I'm just kind of showing you the route where all the Basilisks are. But again, 
There is some in the uh, Great Hollow as well. Um, they're basically the same, but the Great Hollow is way much more of a bitch to navigate. And you might as well kill two birds with one stone while you're here already trying to get the humanities from the rats. You can get the Eyes of Death from the Basilisks here in the sewers of the depths. Um, and it's an early game area, so it's hardly difficult or whatever. And they drop it pretty good. This is probably the best uh, drop rate out of any uh, in the video. So, yeah. All right, and now we are in the Valley of the Drakes bonfire. Uh, that leads to the Darkroot Basin so that we can get uh, the Drakes. These are the only uh, enemy in the game that drop the Dragon Scales, which are going to be useful for leveling up in the Path of the Dragon Covenant. And again, um, a similar pattern with some of these other covenants. You need 10 Dragon Scales to get the Dragon Headstone. Or, I'm sorry, the Dragon Headstone is acquired when you join the Covenant, but it does more damage if you offer 10 Dragon Scales. And then, um, you know... Your, the range on the Dragon Torso is a bit better, um, even though you technically don't get it till you offer 30 Dragon Scales. Um, and then basically all your stuff just does more damage once you get to 30 Dragon Scales donated and 80 Dragon Scales donated, which is kind of insane because these guys have a very low drop rate for their Dragon Scales. And these guys are probably the toughest enemy out of the other enemies in the game to farm for Covenant items. As their lightning, if they catch you out with it, is pretty deadly. And especially when you get to this back part, it's hard to not trigger the aggro of more than one, or less than one, uh, rather, dragon. But the typical strategy here for these guys is just get in their left side while they're starting to breathe lightning. And just hit them with your sword, pretty much. As you can see, I died to him here. <laughs> uh, well, I had died to him before showing this part of the recording. But there is ways to bait them. And not be too tricky with them. Uh, but they will give you a hard time if you are not in sort of the more late game stats. As this character is level 80. So that's just an FYI. But again, the dragon scales are useful also. If you don't want to just farm for the Path of the Dragon Covenant. To level up, uh, you know, the dragon weapons. With, uh, I guess, their standard reinforcement to plus 5. So this is a good, great place to farm for those. The game does give you some. And I thought I was going to go off the edge there for a second. Uh, other notable things, uh, if you go up that ladder, you'll get the red tearstone ring, which is a pretty good ring as well um, in this area. And I didn't show the other drake, but there is one along this narrow path closer towards uh, the way back towards Firelink Shrine. That will also drop them. You can see them on the edge of the screen there. But, yep, these guys do drop the uh, dragon scales, so make sure you uh, farm them here for it. And, again, I'm just showing the end of the battle at this point to... Uh, show you uh have a bleed weapon the eye auto is probably the best weapon in the game so make sure you do that and uh yep so get your dragon scales there okay and the last item we are going to be showing in this video because the other covenants don't um have any offering requirements or anything is going to be the uh, souvenirs of appraisal now, you can get these off of the weird bird demon things in the Painted World of Ariamis. Just know that if you do go through the Painted World, you will have to go all the way to Priscilla to beat the realm in the level, because unless you have the warping ability, but even still, I don't think the Painted World lets you warp out of it without going through Priscilla's Gate. So anyways, um, I went the wrong way here at first. But essentially, uh, and this is also a good place to farm for souls. So you're going to see something really magnificent here. Basically, you can, if you have Log... Or like Fire Tempest, you could literally just obliterate these guys. But these guys are all worth 500 souls apiece. So if you have the Silver Serpent Ring, you can get massive amounts of souls from these guys. Every, like, rest of the bonfire, they'll respawn, and you just get a lot of souls from them. That's if you need souls, though. Now I'll show you the best path for the birds. Um, so when you're in the Painted World, again, instead of going to those guys, you can go up to the right here and um, sort of... I guess it went back to the bonfire. I don't know why I'm going back to the bonfire. <laughs> I'm showing you the proper route. Okay. Uh, so you go to the bonfire here. You go to the right up these stairs. You're going to have to kill a couple hollows, of course. But these guys are pretty manageable, obviously. They're just the, the hollows in the beginning of the game. Keep in mind that the enemies of the Painted World do do considerably more damage than most of the other areas of the game. Because it's supposed to be like a condemned and cursed realm. So try to be careful about that. Because these hollows can gank you just like they did in the asylum. Uh, or the beginnings of the game. 
<laughs> so once you get to the top of these stairs, you will find the bird, bat, de demon things right there that will fly at you when you pick up the item normally. But again, you're farming these guys for the souvenirs of appraisal, which can be uh, used to rank yourself up in the Dark Moon Covenant. Uh, which again, when you join the Covenant, you'll get the blue eye orb and the ring. But if you donate 10 of these souvenirs of appraisal, you will get the... Uh, Dark Moon Blade, which is the primary reason people grind for this stuff, which is a really good miracle. It's a little bit better than Sunlight Blade. And here I'm just showing you an alternative uh, place to farm these guys. But if you donate 30 souvenirs of appraisal, basically your Dark Moon Blade will do more damage. And then if you donate 80, it'll do insane amounts of more damage. Um, so yeah. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, uh, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe, as I really do enjoy making these videos for you guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make any other sort of Dark Souls Remastered tutorials on any other parts of the game. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough here soon, so if you don't want to miss all that, be sure you do turn on the notifications as well. Um, that's about it for today for me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.